there is one room which contains the memories and awards gathered over half a century. It all began for Sid Gilman when he became a head coach at Miami of Ohio and the University of Cincinnati. There he developed the reputation of being a master of offensive innovation. His success on the collegiate level led to a coaching job with the Los Angeles Rams. His first Rams team welcomed Sid by winning the Western Conference title. His contributions to the AFL were immeasurable. Eight winning seasons over 10 years and one championship tells the story. Following his career in San Diego, Gilman joined the Houston Oilers. He instilled a winning attitude in Houston and was rewarded with the Conference Coach of the Year Award. During the final phase of his career, he became an offensive specialist. His expertise helped the Philadelphia Eagles to develop a potent passing game during their Super Bowl season in 1980. In 1983, Sid Gilman finally received the ultimate honor. He was inducted into the Professional Football Hall of Fame. And this, to me, is the greatest thrill the greatest honor that any football person could achieve. And I sincerely want to take this opportunity and give my heartfelt thanks to all the coaches and all the players that I've worked with over the years, the selection committee, and all of you folks. Thank you and God bless you. It was, without question, the greatest thrill of my life and the uh, greatest experience that I ever had. Not knowing, of course, that uh, it ever was going to happen. And it's a thing that a coach, at least a coach, never thinks about uh, uh, ever being uh, inducted or selected for the Hall of Fame. came as a complete surprise, and I'm, I was thrilled to death. Sid Gilman's success was based on one word, preparation. He spent countless hours viewing films in order to spot an opposing team's weakness. He built a library of films and playbooks which covered every offensive situation imaginable. The Chargers went into every game knowing that all they had to do was execute Sid Gilman's game plan. When this happened, defenses often folded while the Chargers galloped into the end zone. The Chargers provided their coach with winning football teams and their fans with an exciting new brand of football. The theory was to pass, screen, draw, and trap. We felt that if we could pass successfully, uh, then we could run the draw play, which you see so often. Uh, then we could force a heavy rush, which would uh, uh, make the uh, trap play, you know, the trap where you let somebody come in and then you hit him with a cross block, uh, that would lend itself to the trap play, you see. And then there's 50 different kinds of screens. There is the late screen, the slip screen, the speed screen, and uh, we had all those things going for it, and, uh, and we could score. The 1963 San Diego Chargers may have been Sid Gilman's best team. They led the league in scoring while winning their third division title in four years. They faced the blitzing defense of the Boston Patriots in the AFL title game. Sid Gilman decided to attack the Patriots on the ground. This adjustment proved to be the determining factor in the game. Charger running backs blasted through a startled Boston defense as the Chargers took the lead on their first possession of the game. With the Patriots completely confused, the Chargers resorted to their air attack and sealed their first AFL title with a devastating 51-10 victory. What one man in motion does to this defense is change the responsibility of practically all the linebackers. It changes the responsibility of all the secondary men. So by doing 
by putting one guy in motion with this dogging setup, it, it just disrupted their entire system of coverage. And uh, so we hit them lucky right at the beginning of the ball game and uh, just went on and on and on. Following their success in 1963, the San Diego Chargers continued to lead the AFL in scoring with one of the most balanced and explosive offenses in football. By the late 60s, Sid Gilman's offense was led by quarterback John Hadle. So I was mentioning the fact that it is so important if you're going to get a passing game, you've got to be able to throw long. If you do that successfully, then you can throw underneath. Well, John became one of the finest long passers in the history of the game. The Chargers' best running back was Dickie Post, who averaged five yards per carry in 1968. Uh, Dickie Post uh, was a super runner, another one of these little scat backs that could change direction and just start and stop, start and stop, change direction, take off. Strong little fella, and he was a very fine football player. At split end for the Chargers was number 27, Gary Garrison. I, I used to call him the little artist. We, we think of moves as a series of feelings, and he could change direction three times and then take off to the final direction that he wanted to go as well as anybody that's ever played the game. Finally, there was Lance Allworth the most exciting receiver in the game. Lance uh, was one of these individuals that uh, I don't think anybody in the history of the game could run, jump, and catch a football, just literally take it away from a big crowd. What a beautiful runner and jumper and hands. There's nobody who ever lived with better hands than Lance. The AFL merged with the NFL in 1970. The AFL San Diego Chargers were now a part of history, but Sid Gilman's legacy would not soon be forgotten. Oh, no. Motivation. Sid Gilman was a master at motivating his players. Pattern call, get the support pattern call. Get up in there, Dick. Let's go. Come on, gang. Come on, gang. Everybody stay with it. Everybody stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it, man. Look at the ball. Look at the ball. Everybody, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Hey, Bobby! Get tighter on him. Just give it off too damn much. Willie! Now, you doesn't look to me like you're running well out there. Now, if you can't run, your place is back here, see? Now, are you able to run or aren't you able to run? All right. We'll watch you another series. So good! Indeed, Sid Gilman was a master motivator, but that was only one aspect of his job. Sid, what is the main job of the head coach in pro football? Well, uh, coaching football is just like running uh, any industry. Uh, I can cite the example of Lee Iacocca, that great coach of the Chrysler organization. Came into Chrysler when they were flat on their backs. And then because of his tremendous knowledge of the automobile industry and uh, uh, his tremendous knowledge of uh, selection of people, you see, well, he just turned that company uh, right around. The same with football. Great knowledge of the game of football. Great knowledge of organization, uh, which is reflected by uh, the hiring of uh, uh, the knowledge of hiring good people and then uh, instilling upon those people the knowledge of the game making good coaches out of assistant coaches, and then surrounding yourself with, uh, with great talent, uh, playing talent. And actually uh, put all that together, and you've got a great organization.